And we were talking about this at the end of uh, the last week of Split 1. Tricky seemed like he had started to really make strides in the right direction. We're into draft for game number one, ladies and gentlemen. Rising Lotus versus Team Secret. Having a look over at the lobby, we can see that Leon is going to be starting this week, though. Even though he's a sub, he is starting this week in the lane position. Yeah, it was actually a little bit surprising to me to see that they had him listed as the sub, because I kind of expected Leon would be the starter. And actually, for the side of Rising Lotus, they are also using a substitute player. They're using Flobby. I don't think we've actually seen Flobby thus far. I might be mistaken on that, but I don't recall Flobby playing. I don't recall Flobby playing either, so I'm interested to see how he's going to do. Uh, obviously, this is an important matchup for Rising Lotus, so they've got some faith in him. Yeah, I was looking at challenge battles, and Rising Lotus, like, they had a really nice CP Ringo, which we don't see a lot of, and they actually won with the CP Ringo and played it really well by Lore. Hell's Devil on Lance looks really, really impressive. Mm -hmm. um, and Agony, amazing Sky. So they actually played a Sky Feather comp with Lyra and won against their, their Lemon and Lime. So that was a very interesting um, draft and meta composition that they drafted from Li Rising Lotus. So really, really interesting to see what Rising Lotus is going to pull out here today. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be intriguing to see if Rising Lotus pulls something like that out again. Because a lot of the times, especially when it comes back to the point where you're not, like, do or die in the challenge battles, you say, all right, let's play more meta things, let's just do comfortable stuff, let's work on that. Um, sometimes those glass cannon strategies, as I like to call them, not because they have glass cannon characters on the line necessarily, but because you fire them once and then everyone knows you're going to get <laughs> countered. Um, you know, sometimes those don't work in the long run. The draft has been restarted a couple of times here, guys. We will be getting it underway the momentarily. Rising Lotus is on side A. I believe that they have uh, had to submit their ban earlier on. It's going to be a Kestrel ban coming in from Rising Lotus. All right, so Kestrel taken right off the board. We saw how effective the Kestrel can be if uh, left unchecked in our first series. So. Not going to be letting, uh, you have to assume it would have gone to I'm the Doom if it was let through, but Fortress going to be taken off the board as well. Rising Lotus will probably take Lyra here. Yep, Lyra, I expect the Team Seeker is going to take the Adagio away, potentially banning or picking that Cruel. So I think Cruel will be, oh, the Lance is actually yeah. taken, not Adagio. Yeah, so they're going to maybe see if they can get the Adagio to come back to them, but banning with the Samuel Smart, you oftentimes when we do see the Samuel, it's paired with a Lyra. Right. So uh, it's it's a nice band there. It's going to be Vox taken off the board. So Adagio is still available. Let's see if they decide to grab that. I feel like Leon in lane on that Adagio could do some serious work. But a big question, I think, moving into this update needs to be like, where is Adagio going to be played? The things that were hit mm -hmm. were like his range, which affects his trading in lane. It is going to be picked up here. Yeah, we've seen him played much more as a captain on this patch because of that range hit. Uh, it wasn't a large hit to the range, but it was enough that a lot of players aren't Ooh. quite as comfortable. But Scarf going to be coming out. I love the Scarf pick. Mages are back this, this patch, guys, and Mages work. They're really strong once they build up. And with Lyra offering that early game power with Scarf getting to the late game, I really like this composition. I think for the last pick, they probably might pick Glaive here potentially to help Scarf um, mm -hmm. keep Lance off Scarf. So let's see what Rising Lotus will choose to pick. Or they might even pick Black Brother with the Flyer, which since that's a pretty strong combination as well. And he's very mobile to dodge the Lance. So let's see what... Oh, Glaive. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to see the Glaive. It not only does it help to protect the Scarf, but it also helps Scarf get through that early game where he can struggle. You know, you can set up kills. It doesn't matter who you have with the Glaive. You can set up kills early on and try and just you know, really propel your carry that much further. I would love Team Seer to take Grumpjaw here. Grumpjaw is going to be key to eating the Glaive or the Lyra and just jumping onto Scarf with Aldagio Lance being free and open. So Grumpjaw would be an amazing pick here if they play it. Or they can even go uh, Flicker with a Weapon Lance. That could potentially work as well. Um, there's a lot of options. Taka would, wouldn't be too bad in this situation, and they pick Taka. <laughs> All, right. All right, so you didn't have a chance to explain why Taka would be good in this situation. What, what makes him work? Yeah, because Lyra, you have to bail out the B, but he can get onto Scarf, force Glaive to do in a defensive afterburn, so they can't engage, and then Lance and the Dodger basically just pile onto the Scarf and kill Scarf. Guy, that makes a lot of sense. And Lyra, the right bulwark is going to be pretty critical here, right? You really need to make sure you're yep. landing that, giving Scarf the maximum amount of time to become strong in these fights. Yeah, this is going to be all about ramping up on the side of Rising Lotus. If they can get to that 18-minute mark without being too far behind, I think the Scarf just starts to take over the game. 
you got to think uh, heading into this series as well, Rising Lotus just went through the Crucible, right? Like they fought in the challenge battles, they managed to stay in. They probably are feeling very well practiced. The difference comes in the Flobby pickup, right? Like they're using yep. one of their subs. How much has he practiced with the team? That's what I'm going to be looking for as we head into game number. I'm going to be mostly focusing on Leon in the lane. We said a couple times in Split 1 that we kind of wanted to see Team Secret make this adaptation because just the way the meta is, having Leon in the lane, he can really shine and carry a game from there. All right, well, we're on to the fold for game number one. Guys, predictions real fast. Team Secret, I think Leon takes over. Every time Team Secret got Taka, they won. So let's not jinx him, but I think Team Secret got this. <laughs> All right, we're on to the housing unfold, ladies and gentlemen, for game number one of Rising Lotus versus Team Secret, passing it on over to Dalsy and Scoundrel. Well, let us not forget that this Taka is on I'm the Doom, not quite Leon here. But perhaps for Team Secret, it is just a pick that enables their competition to work here. You know, I saw a cool photo just the other day, Scoundrel, from uh, Leon, who posted, you know, just man, I'm the Doom, Leon. We've all got that 3000 ELO, and they're looking to put that 3000 ELO right on where their mouth is. Let's try and find this first blood. Where onto Agony, it looks like it's not going to go through. Not quite got the damage just yet, but they might be able to steal away some camps. The problem is, Flobby on this Lyra can heal them all back. Absolutely. With the uh, the healing coming out in the roam position, it makes it a lot more difficult for Team Secret to get the win here. Agony, big hit. There's the Impale. Ooh. This is going to be very close. Very close down to the wire. They push on the Doom out. There's no way he comes back. First Blood going to go the way of Rising Lotus. Flobby keeps Agony alive, and they're able to stake, take that one away. Yeah, and Leon getting punished in lane here as well against Hell's Devil on this Scarf, which we have seen a lot more of, by the way. We've seen huge amounts of Scarf in Update 2.3. Uh, saw him a little bit in the challenge battles, like he said. Fuji prioritizing that for Echo Fox. And I uh, saw a lot of it in VIS as well this week when we did the VIS casting. Uh, we saw quite a lot of Scarf prioritized. So he's got great wave clear, can protect his turrets really easily. Um, and for a lot of games, we do seem to tend to see them scale up towards the late game, which Scarf becomes monstrous in. So keep your eyes on this Scarf pick. I think it's definitely got value, especially with the uh, the Glaive allowing him to go weapon power. And that's something that we haven't seen a lot of recently, Dalsy. Uh, if you want to put pressure on attacker early on, a weapon power Glaive is a good place to start because it has a lot of early jungle pressure. Right, this is just a complete flip-flop of the, uh, the norm that we've seen in 2.2. CP... Uh, laners are back weapon power, junglers are viable and can be played uh, very easily. So we're going to see that coming out in full force here. Rising Lotus, they, they made their way through their challenge battles. They played against Lemon and Lime. They would take it. Ooh, Hell's Devil walks straight into a trap. He's going to get bursted right down. I don't think he survives this. That's going to be I'm the Doom taking the kill. Bit of a misstep there. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about for Rising Lotus. is the fact that Hell's Devil, he's been pushed up from the lane into the ca the lane pos uh, from the room into the lane position based on the fact that they do not have Loire this week. Flobby's coming in as a substitute into that captain position. And that's just so much pressure on Rising Lotus up against Team Secret as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. You've uh, got some pressure here. Actually, going to start some pressure on Leon. The uh, heal trying to slow him down, but Just Man saves the day with that Gideon wall. And Agony, when you have that one afterburn as Weapon Power Glaive early on, that's kind of all you have left in the tank. And uh, you kind of have to back out if you don't manage to get the kill from there, but... I agree. I think Hell's Devil got a lot of pressure on his shoulders here and kind of face checked, had no vision, got punished for it, and Team Secret gifted a little bit of a grace in this early game. They had a bit of struggled early on. They had been struggling, obviously, with the Tacker in the jungle, which, by the way, is also weapon power Tacker. Uh, we hadn't touched on that, but this is actually likely going to be a weapon power Tacker, which is something we don't see too often either. Uh, weapon power Tacker, I think, a lot more sustained in team fights than a lot of you will be used to, kind of there more for his basic attacks and sustained damage but I, I think it's uh, arguably the weaker of the two build paths for him although definitely has its merits yeah no I, I think um i think i would agree with you there that uh cp taka definitely has a lot of merit to it and I, uh, a lot of people will run it wherever possible because of that but it does not mean that i'm the doom on this weapon power taka cannot make things work we're going to see the fountains be completed here for flobby just man though has prioritized a bit of shielding and some vision as well. So we'll be delaying that fountain purchase for Team Secret. Well, obviously he, that, that builds into the fountain. Um, it, it's basically got the items to combine. It just didn't have the gold to combine the fountain together. So 
Um, he probably just prioritized a little bit more in scout traps. Didn't quite have the, uh, the gold required. And so he says, oh, well, I'm going to have the gold required in, you know, roughly a minute maybe. And then, and then I can think about team fighting. So he just wants to prioritize vision so they get to that point, And then he'll combine for the fountain as soon as he physically can, which I think is very close around the corner. I think it's 700, I believe. So he should be able to pick it up very soon. Yeah, you can see they rotate down to the shop and there is the fountain coming forward onto your screens as well. Back up to the lane as a three. Team Secret going to look to try and find some aggression, but the flare goes down immediately from Flobby, meaning that they are going to recognize that I'm the Doom is here in the lane. Going to prevent that gun coming forward. Team Secret, possibly now one of the most stacked lineups in Europe with the talent that is available to them. I'm really excited to see how they make this work for themselves. Absolutely, and uh, Leon piloting the CP Adagio, by the way, which is one of his best heroes. I think classically, a lot of people have said that Leon's ability to play CP Adagio is almost unparalleled. But obviously Adagio took some hits. We actually got a, oh wow, I think they actually just took out the Glaive there. Um, maybe wow. Glaive overstepped. Yeah, no, <laughs> didn't even spot it. So quick no. coming forward. Just man must have rooted him down and I'm the Doom was able to finish him off. It's gonna be them in the lane, a bit of damage going straight down onto this Taka, but they're going to look for an engage. Flobby with the bright bow up prevents it. They're burning in the goop there. Leon taking huge damage, Just Man as well. Holding onto the fountain though, not wanting to burst that ability just yet. And here comes Agony, gonna come straight on in and put pressure on I'm the Doom. He's gonna pay him back the favor and he could find Just Man as well. The movement speed's there. He's gonna knock him into the wall, but can he execute? There's gonna be a 15 second on that cooldown. It's the thing about this uh, weapon power glaive, not as many after beds. And Leon, he wants to fight. This is a brave for Leon. Looking to try and find the kill as Agony trying to turn on to Just Man. Leon able to heal him up for now, but there's the afterburn. That's going to be Just Man falling and aggression from Team Secret. It's being punished by Rising Lotus. Yeah, again, like that's that's the power of C uh, weapon power glaive. A lot of people kind of forgotten what Weapon Power Glaive can do, because we've seen so much CP Glaive over the last few weeks, but Weapon Power Glaive is scary, dude. That is, you know, very hard hitting, especially with the guaranteed critical strike. It's gonna have to burn to get away here. Will I'm the Doom have what it takes to take him down? Yes, he will. Yeah, that's gonna be fairly easy. A really back and forth game here as Flobby in trouble, but Hell's Devil comes in to try and provide the support. That's gonna be Flobby falling a double kill here for this Taka. And Hell's Devil, well, he's trying to land the abilities, but he's not gonna be able to find the Taka in return. In fact, gonna run into Just Man. A bit precarious, has to be careful. There's the Impale. That's gonna be the burn effect coming forward from Leon as well. The Agent of Wrath can stack up on that. Uh, gift of fire so so much but at the moment team secret just finding on back there's an impale they're going for this fortified health to try and keep him forward but it does not come through you could see the attempt there from hell's devil to try and keep himself alive with the dragon's breath but it wasn't to any avail close but it was great great gift view and all from just mad to stop the dragon's breath coming out as well and by the way, Hell's Devil going for the Frostburn, probably likely moving towards the Eve of Harvest next, because I think he's going to really need that sustain versus the Taka. I want to just highlight while we're in this pause, the difference in play style that you see between a weapon power and a CP Taka. CP Taka, I've always called it like guerrilla warfare. You kind of jump in, do your damage, stealth out, wait for your cooldowns, do it again in a different time and different place. Weapon power, weapon power Taka can, can play like that, but realistically plays a little bit more differently. It plays... A lot more sustained damage. Jumps in, consistently looks to land basic attacks, kind of sticks to his target, uses Kaku to reposition to get more basic attacks down. And uh, it can be quite tricky to get away from him because of those movement speed bonuses, because of his ability to stick to you. Um, but obviously doesn't have the burst associated. So does need to be able to kind of capitalize in the early game, really. Because once armor starts to come down, unless we see a bone saw, which could very well be the case, by the way. I'm, I'm not ruling out a bone saw, potentially second item or third item for this Taka. You know, you will then eventually start to struggle against the power of uh, of armor, which can be a real pain in the butt for you. Well, we will find out very shortly, Scoundrel, what this pause is in relation to. Assume uh, it's going to be uh, a player experiencing major difficulties as we're very tight on the rules. Uh, when it, it comes to a pause, you have to be you know, facing a fairly substantial a crisis, a midlife crisis, essentially, at Scoundrel. You've gone out and bought if, yourself If any of these players are having midlife crises, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> with my life, because they're all younger than me. It's certainly true. 
Uh, <laughs> I've had the pleasure of talking with a lot of these players over the last week at Scoundrel, especially European players. Um, and I'm just surprised at the stark talent that these youngsters have. So many people aged between 13 and 16 playing at the highest level of Vainglory. I, yeah, I think uh, the medical way of looking at it has always been generally your reflexes and things are higher. But what I always find impressive is their ability to analyze and break down the game at that level because I don't know if I'd have been able to do that at that age. I, I think having that kind of tactical mindset, I, I think I always look to... Um, I think I was most impressed when I, I first turned up to a live event. It was last July in America. I think it was the, the North American Spring Live Championships. And I remember looking at some video content that had been done for a player called Dienzio. A lot of you might know him, obviously, um, being a big American star. Um, and he was, I think he was 13 at the time. And I was, I was, li I was listening to Dienzio talk. And I was like, this guy is, uh, like, especially in, in interviews and things, seems like he approaches the ga a game in a way that I never did or ever could have approached a game at that level when I was 13. I mean, I just, I was just thoroughly impressed with the sort of tactical minds that these players develop at such a young age at this game. It's, it's actually just outright impressive. Um, I mean, I'm 20, what am I, how old am I now, Darcy? 25? Yeah, I think I'm 25. 25 or 26? Yeah, I think I'm Essentially, 25. you're an old, you're an old man. Yeah, exactly. Well into your life. Exactly. So, and I, I, you know, I struggle sometimes to, to, to break down the game. So I'm just very impressed. Yeah, no, absolutely. I would have to say the same. We are going to get out of this pause very quickly here as a team secret. They rotate down from the lane back towards the shop. Leon going to take some of these creeps away as well. Get himself an infusion ready for a fight. You know, a lot of the North American players, when I talk to them, uh, they, they criticize European players for their lack of infusions um, early on. And I, I've seen a great shift over the last couple of weeks for everyone. This gold mine is going to be a point of contention. Can they steal it away? Rising Lotus able to steal it away. It. And now they're looking to try and escape as well. This stun comes forward. That's going to be Agony losing his life. The man who stole it for Rising Lotus. But they're going to lose Flobby by the looks of it in the process as well. No. Nope. Gets out alive. Hell's Devil. Maybe not the same fate. Is going to block out that impale. But misses the Spitfire. Is able to trade his life. Wow. What a split fight. A two for one in the end across the board. Gold miner goes in favor of Rising Lotus. But Team Secret looking for a turret. Lobby might be able to clear this with his sigil, but I don't know if he's got it up and available because he healed himself. Trying with all of his might, but this should be the turret going over to Leon. Agony's coming through here. Rising Lotus may be looking to punish this. They do have that afterburn available. Yeah, they're going to try and get straight on to Leon. Agony holding it. Oh, he knocks him into the turret, but able to secure the kill in the end. Can he escape, though? This oh, is to Leon, Leon laid down so much damage. He puts down the fire, but he's not able to get the burn. Leon going to burn in this goop as the Spitfire comes down. Hell's Devil burns him alive. And now I'm the Dooms trying to find a return kill. Is able to as Agony hides in the bush. But here comes the Tucker straight on forward. Can he find the kill? There's oh, the, the fountain, fountain coming forward. That is so crucial for Rising Lotus. They're going to be be able to try and chase down Ino Dune. He's not this CP Tugger. Does not have his cooldowns available every second, but he is able to go stealth for now. Going to get spotted, I believe? No, he's not. Able to escape just in time. Very messy stuff, but the net gold income of it is a gold miner to Rising Lotus and a turret to Team Secret. So it basically equaled out as I believe that was almost a fully stacked gold mine. Wow. Back and forth, but let's keep an eye on, on what we're looking at in terms of item spikes, Dalsy. Because remember, Scarf, he's heading towards three items. Big, hard-hitting late game. Leon will also have a similar output, but, you know, Scarf has got a great long-range advantage with that Spitfire. Obviously, Goop is a great zoning tool as well. Once he hits that Eve of Harvest, he might go towards a Broken Myth, and that's when he'll start to really become scary. He's got the Breaking Point and the Sorrow Blade for the glaive and that's uh that's an interesting one he's playing for the elongated team fights which makes sense with the uh with the scarf they've just taken another 133 gold payout now they're gonna go for a fight yeah they're looking straight for the fight here and hell's devil does not want it he's calling for the disengage but agony will go down through the fire hell's devil wow he's gonna go very low gets bursted on down a double for the doom and flobby just about to escape that impale does root him but he gets out alive is the key of it Team Secret, I guess they just wanted the uh, 400 gold, I guess it was in the end, to try and push their lead forward. Very interesting plays nonetheless. They get the two heals. Absolutely, but they also get that flank play and find a position to uh, essentially deliver everybody straight to Hell's Devil, which is definitely the key. We are going to defeat the sentry. I'm the Doom working up towards what looks to be a poison shiv next, Dalsy. 
That looks to be his next item choice. So the, 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 reducing healing on a key target like Scarf is incredibly important. Uh, and obviously also giving him some sustain in these fights too. But actually prioritizing the Aegis over any more offensive items. I guess believing that Leon brings all the damage that they need right now with the Broken Myth and the alternating current spike that he's got. And you can certainly see he's bringing a lot of damage when this Adagio gets on top of you, then he really gets on top of you. Look at Leon, prioritized journey boots here very, very early so he can stick to his targets. We saw this earlier, Excoundrel, during did. one of our disastrous uh, solo queue experiences. We actually won and that game, it, though. We did win that game. We brought it back. But hey, that Adagio... He hurt, and you can see Leon is just looking to stick to his targets and lay down a lot of damage. Especially against the key backline target. Having an Adagio with um, Journey Boots, you might think this is great for Adagio kiting, but it's not actually necessarily used for that. It's used to get right next to your target. If you can't have your teammates deliver the Gift of Fire, you can chase your target down, deliver Gift of Fire yourself, and start to really deal that incredible damage. So, you know, keep an eye out on how... Leon attempts to use these journey boots. It's something that we have seen develop for Adagios, especially because of the range nerf. And I think it could be because of that slight range nerf. This just allows them to be more aggressive and get into range more easily. Ooh, Engage comes forward, but it's turned around. That's going to be Hell's Devil oh, through look at the that fire. Damage. But wow, Leon just takes him down, looking for a second onto Hell's Devil, and he's going to find it as well. Agony rooted up next to the Crystal Sentry. Here comes Leon to try and find the kill. Agony does find one through it all, but that <laughs> Crystal Sentry, it goes on to Leon. And just then says, thanks, mate. I'll finish the job. Ace comes forward for Team Secret. The burst so huge from them, and they're going to take a turret as well. Leon single-handedly kept that fight in the running. That massive, massive verse of judgment. It zoned out um, Flobby at the back line. Hell's Devil took the entire damage despite blocking the stun. And you saw exactly what we mentioned just before that fight broke out. It was a journey boots. Gift of fire on yourself. Take out the key target. That's exactly what Leon wanted to achieve with these boot pickups early on. It allows even post-range nerf. Adagios to be super aggressive and find those kills where they can and where it's necessary to be so aggressive. I think that's an incredible, you know, uh, sensible item choice for him. It's actually Just Man and Leon now trying to two versus three. Is I'm the Doom going to back them up now? Look at the damage coming out from Leon. That's insane. Yeah, absolutely insane. Look, he's going to pop the Jenny Boots and get straight on into the action. Here comes Doom straight onto Hell's Devil and Pale lands on Agony. The Fountain is there, but that's going to be Agony falling as Hell's Devil falls as well. It's an annihilation coming out of Team Secret as they're looking to find the third and the ace for themselves. This is all pre-15, so there's no Kraken to take, but a choke point turret is definitely a welcome uh, victory prize for them. Well... Who needs attacker or a lance to deliver Gift of Fire when you can journey boots into the middle of the enemy team and do it yourself? I think that's uh, a good way of phrasing it. That was uh, essentially Leon running in, getting a massive Gift of Fire application, started wailing that damage down, and again, his ultimate key to pick off Hell's Devil in the back line, who hasn't really got any shielding, because you don't necessarily, you don't really build shielding on a Scarf, right? This is a little bit like a CP Kestrel. You rely on your range to be your defense. Uh, and he's only got the reflex block, so he isn't, he's not really reducing any of the damage apart from the base shielding coming out from Adagio's ultimate right now. So he has to be very careful that he's able to get out of the range of it. Otherwise, he's going to be dead dragon every single time. And uh, yeah, I've got to say that the entire team secret roster playing well, Hell's Devil's dead, probably dead again. Yeah, no, Justman finds the flank. And, wow, where did Hell's Devil go? Dead Dragon indeed. Leon, very low, but gets the sustain from that fountain. Agony's doing a bit of work here. The Crystal Sentry acting as that third member. They might just be able to take down Doom. They do. They're looking for Leon. They're going to take him down as well. Double kill for Agony. A mistake from Team Secret fighting next to that Crystal Sentry. Does so much work. Looking for Justman, but such a hard target to lock down. The Kraken, she's spawned. They can find the kill onto Justman. Well, it definitely makes taking that cracking easier but just man he combat rolls all across the fold and will be able to escape just now yeah just call it a mistake from team secret but also a great play from rising lotus to prioritize fighting around that that crystal century prioritize that as a area of combat knowing that it would do a lot of work it acts as that third man that they lost in the form of scarf also leon i think he was so scared of that afterburn i think he gave it too much respect he basically exited the fight for the entire time, so that when he actually re-entered after Burn was up anyway, I think if he just stuck around and tried to allow Just Man or I'm the Doom to tank that Crystal Sentry turret and then been there as just landing a couple of basic attacks from time to time, they might have actually found a, a win in that team fight. But 
wasn't able to take the Kraken, and now it's Team Secret that are asking the questions. Team Secret are the ones now trying to take this beast from the map, and I don't know if Rising Lotus can fight this. They might be able to go for a steal. steal. This is going to be super close. Ooh, double impales onto Flobby, Flobby onto Hell's Devil. They're looking for the steal here. This Kraken has been disengaged by Team Secret, looking for the fight. Leon's going to burst Look at the damage! Look at that damage coming out of Leon! Agony tries to steal the Kraken, but she's reset, and the Flobby's not in a great position either. He gets taken on down. What is that damage from Leon? Looking for Agony to finish off, get the ace, the heal onto himself, and the auto attack's going down. I'm the Doom, disengage the Kraken to hit the kill as well. Team Secret, when they get a fight in their own terms, well, they just destroy this Rising Lotus. And that is a fully channeled Versa Judgment against a Scarf with little to no shielding. He has got some tier 1 shielding now, the light shield being picked up. But oh, no. that is pretty insane damage coming out from, from Leon. And actually, what's really interesting is that he is always positioning himself and using that when he knows that he's going to land the majority of the damage onto Scarf. Actually, it looks like it's going to be Blade going down. I kind of expected that earlier. And they're going to get the last life on this Crystal Sentry as well. So that's been fully eliminated. But whenever Scarf channels the Dragon's Breath, Leon then channels the Earth of Judgment. Realizing that Scarf has to be in range to use that Dragon's Breath. And that's usually going to keep him in the range of that area of effect of the Earth of Judgment. Really clever... Uh, timing and use and positioning of the Verse of Judgment there because it basically forces Hell's Devil to waste his ultimate or take the brunt of the damage. And obviously, the brunt of the damage is around 800 right now, Dalsy, basically one-shotting him. Yeah, huge stuff. They do not have Agony here to defend, but I'm the Doom's not here yet. Agony will spawn. There's the uh, Dragon's Breath going out. Justman taking a huge chunk of damage, going to get taken very low here. Fountain comes out and he's able to walk away. Impales, double roots, and Leon's just going to start doing work. The Kraken, she's almost taken the turret. Team Secret with Doom back into the base. Going to look to finish the game right here. Verse of Judgment goes out. It bursts people down. That's going to be this base falling as Doom finishes the game. Team Secret, super rock of EU coming together, gonna take game one. Insane early presence from them on this split two, putting pressure on Rising Lotus, a team that I think, you know, have performed well in some occasions and when they play their best, you know, can probably take on anybody. But they do have subs in their roster, they have had to switch things around. Like you said, Hell's Devil has got the pressure on his head and obviously you see, was really focused down by Team Secret during this game. But I gotta say, I think Team Secret played this incredibly well. Leon, again, clever use of that Vertha Judgment from time to time. I'm the Doom doing exactly what he needed to do. Stick to the target consistently. Uh, put pressure on Hell's Devil, force him into awkward situations. Team Secret looked good this game, Dalsy. They continue to look good this series. That's definitely the story, is that Team Secret, this is now their time to shine here in EU once more. They're going to have to continue putting the pressure down a good game one but i want to see what they're capable of even further let's throw it back to the desk to see what they have to think about this all well leon making his way back to the lane something that you guys have been talking about for a while it certainly seemed to pan out in this game he is just a sub for team secret that is accurate but this week he is starting um what was it about his adagio that made it work so well he was very aggressive with it. And that was one of the big keys. You know, constantly we saw him using his boots to get in and apply the gift of fire onto his opponents instead of relying on putting it on allies. It keeps him involved, keeps him being able to put pr the damage out throughout the entire fight. Then the verse of judgments. The verse of judgments were just absolutely game changing. Speaking of the verse of judgments, let's go ahead and have a look at some replays here. You can see Leon being massively impactful again and again. Yeah, Leon lands just such, such cl clutch verse of judgments here, and he's doing it with at least three or more BM stacks. And he does a good job of actually aggroing early to get those stacks, and he has seven, eight stacks here, guys. And he, oh, it's nine stacks uh, verse of judgment, oh, and that just secures three critical team fights. And you can see here again, he's stacking two, three, gets the verse down with four stacks. Amazing plays by Leon. Those ultimates really change a lot of those key fights. And you guys look at it, Verse of Judgment guys has a range of 9. It does 1300 base damage. If you have 9 stacks of Broken Myth with an alternating current, that's 130 uh, crystal power, and you multiply the amplified damage, he does 1800, 1885 damage, and Scarf has no shield. So, 
that's going to melt Scarf, and it did every single time. <laughs> yeah, that was what I was going to point out was Scarf's health, especially you know in the previous ones, it did like you know seven to 800 health, because that was just what Scarf had left, and it outright killed him. But in that last fight, Scarf had 1,400 health when Verse of Judgment went down, plus had fortified health thanks to his own ult, and it dropped him from 1,400 with fortified health to 200 health. <laughs> like, that is just disgusting, the amount of damage coming out from that ultimate. They weren't able to shut it down. Leon m makes it happen. And I'm the Doom as well on this Taka was also able to set up some really nice plays for Team Secret. I think I'm the Doom is another player on the lineup we need to speak about because obviously he actually went ahead and joined Team Secret after split number one being on denial, not doing so well, actually getting eliminated from the game Glory 8. Bacon, you were saying Team Secret spoke to you. They said they really believe in this guy. After those games, you can see he looks like a different player than yeah. when he was on Denial. Yeah, Team Secret was very confident. The, the exact words was, we feel he is one of the best junglers in the game. He just didn't have a chance to prove it because of the team he was on previously. And now with Team Secret, they're giving him a lot more free reign to do what he wants. And his playstyle also fits so well with Leon's. And it's going to be interesting to see how it works with Tricky coming in later, because that was always one of our big things, was Tricky and Leon never really seemed to be on the same page. Will that continue with I'm the Doom, or will they mesh? They're not even going to be on the same book. <laughs> they're always going to be playing when the other one isn't, because uh, they're both laners. But we're into the draft for game number two, Team Secret Rising Lotus. I'm, I meant will Tricky be on the, that same situation with I'm the Doom. I got you. Okay. We do want to note the Rising Lotus, their manager is playing Rome, and their support, Hell's Devil, normally their captain, is playing lane. So that's very interesting that Lori, Lori is not able to play, unfortunately, today for Rising Lotus. So that might affect a few uh, gameplay results here. So the Lyra is picked against the Lance, which is interesting because Lance actually is good into Lyra as long as the Lance comp engages first. And there comes a Vox ban. All right, Team Secret, now they have a chance to ban something. Is a Kroll maybe a good option? You mentioned earlier, Sweet Jay, you don't like banning the Kroll when you already have the Lance. Right. But with Lyra, you can get around that lance pretty <laughs> easily with a crow. Just jump in with the arcane passive. Yeah, that could work. So I think that they'll probably ban Glaive here because Glaive Lyra is pretty <laughs> strong. Oh, actually, Samuel Lyra is a strong composition. So they decided to ban the Samuel out. So with this, I think Rising Lotus will take a laner. So they'll probably go with either Gwen because Gwen is actually good into the lance. So they might go with Gwen here if they can play it or a mage if Hellzell wants to play a mage in lane again. Yeah. And so the Samuel bans. We're seeing it a lot. We're seeing a lot of priority on Samuel here in Europe. I'm still not 100% sold on it. Uh, it. It had such a low win rate in the first split and you know, wasn't really changed much coming into split number two. And I, with the Poison Shiv becoming so strong, Mortal Wounds being very prevalent, I'm almost wondering if you know maybe teams are putting a little bit too much stock into Samuel right now. But we'll have to see. Obviously, they don't want to deal with it. But Glaive going to come through. Glaive's a really strong pick. Especially with Elyra, it's going to make life difficult for whoever Team Secret takes, but there's our first <laughs> pedal. Oh, and oh, Arona. Arona. Okay, so Sweet Jay, break down this Team Secret. Yeah, Pedal and Lance counters Glaive hard. Rona is better than Glaive. Rona can beat Glaive 1v1 because of her ultimate. Mm -hmm. um, so Rising Lotus is put in a really tough spot because their jungler is completely countered by all three picks here. So they need to pick someone that would make sense with Glaive um, that can handle Pedal. So Potentially, uh, they might go with Scarf again or Celeste or Mage here because of because if they play a CP Glaive, they need to play actually they actually need to play CP Glaive and they need to pick a weapon power laner because a weapon Glaive will not work into this comp that they they have here. Okay, so they decided to go with the Baron. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I, I was gonna say I would have actually liked to have seen a Ringo come through. I think Ringo could have worked really well into this composition, but Baron, it's another very very late game focused and. Team Secret, we just saw them not allow Rising Lotus to get to that late game. It was close, though. I mean, they got to like 17 they and a half minutes. They started to get there, but... Borderline. But, I mean, you have to get to like... You have to get to 18 minutes just to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And then the game has to go to like 24 minutes for you to win. So, lasting till just before you might be able to turn a game around doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence. Yeah, and I agree with you, Bacon, because Baron is not a really burst hero until he stacks up. Yeah. And CP Glaive is very bursty, so if they had Ringo, it probably would have been a better combination. Just after burn someone into Ringo, Ringo bursts down Arona or Petal, would have worked better. Because Baron needs to scale up. He's not going to burst someone right away. 
All right, so how do they win this game then? Like, is it just about getting to the late game? What are the ways they need to play the fights? How do they utilize the glaive? They need to try and avoid fights for right. a long time. They need to be using glaive just very defensively, un which is unfortunate. Unless they can find a pick in the lane, they need to be looking to play very defensive and just try and get to that point where Baron can come online. All right, who's going to take this game number two home? I, I have too much faith in I'm the <laughs> Doom and Leon. I think that Team Seeker takes it. Yeah, I think Team Seeker is going to take this one. All right, well, you've heard it from our analysts. Let's find out who's actually going to take it home as we head on to Halcyon Fold for game number two, Team Secret versus Rising Lotus. Dalcy and Excalibur have the call. This is pretty exciting stuff here for Hell's uh, Devil and Rising Lotus. You know, they're kind of going down a slight uh, gambit here. Get the Baron to the late game, do lots of work. Well, they're going to have to face up against I'm the Doom's Petal. Not only that, Leon in the lane with Aruna. A lot of aggression Team Secret can bring. Absolutely, this is definitely a competition that Team Secret can look to run away with. Again, you've got a long time before a Baron comes online, before he gets the three or four items needed to make him a real damage threat. And actually, you know, like they talked about with the, the Glaive, this is going to be a Glaive that's focused on peeling, I think, for the most part. Obviously, when Baron gets super strong, you can be a little bit more aggressive, but in the, the majority of this early to mid game, this will be afterburn to, to peel for Baron, afterburn to get the, the Brona away from Baron, afterburn to get... Um, petal away or even petal into a killing position. So I think uh, we'll have to keep an eye on uh, this. This is definitely going to be very defensive from Rising Lotus. They've got essentially a long way to go before they get to a, a strong team fight position, whereas Team Secret can look to be a little bit more aggressive with this Lance, Rona, and Petal combination. Ooh, Rising Lotus wanted to back away, but did they want to fight? Miscommunications from Flobby there as he turned around straight into the Impale. Now they're on the run do have that Imperial Sigil to speed boost away, so they should be fairly safe. But right now, as these backs are at risk, as Agony is going to get knocked up against War. In fact, I say he's safe, but is he? He has to use the Afterburn defensively. He's actually rushing straight up towards Leon uh, to try and take him down, as he is very low in the lane. But that does mean that the backs do go in favor. Agony will be spotted, trying to steal some camps away here in Team Secret's jungle. We'll have to see if that is punished. Well, look at Lance. He, he backed immediately, knowing that that might actually be the case here for Agony. Trying to steal away these backs. He's very low HP. Agony's been essentially... Ooh. Oh, what a what a Githian wall. Wow. Walks him out the Ashenberg. Just Agony man. deservedly dies, I think, Dowsy. Deservedly. That was great from Just Man. You know, a lot of people are like, why... And, and in the lane, we, we, <laughs> we glaze over. I'm the Doom comes up to Hell's Devil and kills him as well. You know, a lot of people criticize Mowgli for putting Just Man in the wrong position over himself. Everyone's like, Mowgli's such a great captain, but Mowgli himself says he has huge faith and huge belief in Just Man's abilities. Believe that he can play this role better than Mowgli can. And I, I, I have only good things to say about him so far. That Giffian's War predicts the afterburn uh, uh, incredibly, and that's going to be a 2 over lead so far for Team Secret. Yeah, absolutely. The Giffian Wall, I think, was preemptively to stop him actually from escaping regardless, but it, it timed up with the afterburn. It looked so slick. That was great. Actually, interestingly enough, I, I have to harp on with what you said there. I agree with you. After this, maybe this fight. Yeah, it's going to be... Team Secret just laying down the hurt. Hell's Devil on this Baron does not have early game presence whatsoever, and that's what Team Secret are looking to punish. No, absolutely. He's actually gone for a Blazing Salvo and Triple Weapon Blade here early on. Just remedy some of that slow attack speed that the Baron has, funnel on some weapon power, and uh, I guess maybe work towards uh, a breaking point. Oh, no. for a big lobby has to be careful. He gets bursted right on down. Hell's Devil also in trouble here. Team Secret, they're laying down the main train. Agony will come up to provide a bit of solace for the team, but what can he actually do? Everyone's so low, and this Baron doesn't really pack a punch just yet, so it's more just a scary face. Brave, but that's going to be Flobby rooted on down. Will he get taken on down? Yes, the Munions finally find the kill, but they trade it on back. That's going to be a one for one, and Agony's looking for a one for two. Doom's trying to run away, but he cannot. A double kill for Doom, and the ace comes through as Hell's Devil finds Leon as well. What was that from Rising Lotus? Uh, you mean, yeah, I mean, Rising Lotus capitalized, but what was that from Team Secret? I think they went a little bit tunneling too hard onto Flobby. And this is a, a Glaive who's already picked up his Stormguard banner. He will be hitting a little bit harder. Goes a bit greedy. Does get taken out again by uh, Just Man in the back. But has finished his Storm Crown now. And again, they weren't respecting the fact that this has got a Triple Weapon Blade Baron. This is a Baron who's tried to remedy some of his early game by picking up a lot of cheap 
weapon power items to start hitting a little bit harder than he would have done having just gone down a normal, uh, I guess, a heavy steel route here. So I, and they just kind of disrespected. They went all in on the Lyra, disrespected the damage that Agony could do early on, disrespected Hell's Devil's damage, and unfortunately just took a little bit too much across the board. But I think Team Secret probably okay can steady the ship here, but that's a good little bit of remedy for Rising Lotus, because you felt like they were potentially losing this from the outset, and now they've found themselves a little bit of a breathing space against this Team Secret roster. And that's all it is, is a bit of breath, a bit of fresh air into the lungs here at Scoundrel, because they are still under pressure. Yes, they do have, uh, you know, some advantages as far as uh, finding some kills, but actually they're still down by a thousand gold. That turret will go down very shortly if they get onto it, but Hell's Devil, the pressure put onto him is immense. Or well, just one impale and he's down to less than 150 HP. Is forced to recall once more. That is going to be another buy-in for Team Secret if they want to try and capitalize. But Leon will be knocked into the turret range. Just a bit of poke more than anything from Agony to try and say, hey, you know what? Actually, you cannot take this turret. I think actually they need to be aggressive in the lane though because of the fact that Team Secret have almost lost their tier 1 turret off the back of that ace. They need to be aggressive here, they need to be looking to put pressure down because if they give Rising Lotus any time and space in this lane, their turret might go down, they might lose a lot of this early advantage that they try to build up for themselves, and this could be allowing Rising Lotus to get towards the late game that much more readily, but Team Secret Ooh. going in. Yeah, they are going in, Rising Lotus maybe overstayed here, that's going to be the spontaneous combustions onto Floppy. But the Fountain is able to sustain this Lyra through it, the Imperial Sigil there as well. All this time, Hell's Devil has got himself the Sorrow Blade. Farms the jungle, gets the Sorrow Blade. Ion Cannon going to come on down, but it is not going to really find anything as uh, Hell's Devil was kind of caught a little bit in rotation. Now Rising Lotus, they're trying to keep Team Secret off this turret. Hell's Devil was a way away, is coming into the fight very shortly to lay down a bit of damage for the team. But without a Fountain, Rising Lotus are very unlikely to want to fight. The siege from Team Secret is, is fairly weak because your weapon power is coming from the Lee laner. And unfortunately, to get into range of turret, you have to be right next to it, which can be difficult against things like Lyra, can be difficult against things like the Glaive as well. So Team Secret really have to get a massive advantage in a team fight to be able to pressure a turret. Whereas, you know, with Rising Lotus, they've got the range of the Baron. You know, if you're able to shove that minion wave in, your weapon power laner has got a massive range. They need to sort of get a couple of hits in there, here and there, and their siege actually becomes far more valuable. Actually going to be Leon backing out here. Hasn't hit level 6, doesn't feel like he's super confident in a teamfight situation. Wait until he's level 6, then he'll have more success against the likes of the Glaive. But we'll get kited against that Rona easily, so... And it's, uh, it's a competition which I think Rising Lotus can actually make work here, if Team Secret aren't able to capitalize. Yeah, no, that's it. And the window of opportunity for Team Secret is closing, I believe, Excalibur, with every minute. Every minute yeah. that this Baron gets closer and closer, he is going to get rooted up onto the turret, but an agony just flies immediately in. There's the Protector's contract as well. Hell's Devil is going aggressive, trying to find on the do, but maybe too aggressive as Leon is able to find a bit of damage back and forth. Iron Cannon won't find its mark, but Agony may be able to find Leon. Yes, he will. That's going to be Lyra finding the kill. The reflex block, not enough from Leon to keep himself alive. And now Team Secret under fire. This turret is only a breeze away from falling. So Team Secret trying desperately to clear the wave, but it's not enough. Agony dives on in. Turret destroyed in the gold. Well, it swings in Rising Lotus's favor. Yeah, exactly. That's, ex that's a really important point. That this is a Baron composition that is now ahead at 8 minutes 30. That's not that's not good for Team Secret. You definitely felt the desperation in their plays, Dalsy. I don't know about you, but it felt like they were really desperate to make that tower dive work. Leon even jumped in past his teammates, started tanking turret, probably looking for a three-man red fist, but weren't able to make it happen. The defensive, really sort of turtle-like play from Rising Lotus is playing off, but also the fact that Team Secret gifted them that three early kills, that ace, which allowed them to get all that damage done to tower. That might have been enough to get Rising Lotus to a position where they're going to get this Baron to late game. Two items already, Dalsy. That's a big deal. Yeah, Breaking Point and Sorrow Blade. And whilst we're talking about items, a bit of an unconventional build for the Arona as well. Leon's oh, gone wow, down yeah. a Sorrow Blade first. Not going for the Serpent's Mask. Is got that Book of Eulogy still and the Blazing Salvo. So likely going to build a Poison Shiv, I believe, uh, yeah. straight afterwards. But it's a little bit unconventional. Not what we normally see on the lane Rona or in Rona in general. We might actually see her go breaking point next, but it really depends on what they're trying to achieve. And 
The reason you go to Storm Blade on Rona is because you want the flat weapon power. Why would you want flat weapon power, Dowsy? It's kind of guess fairly self-explanatory when you say it like that. You want to burst someone. It's not about sustaining with a, with a surplus mask anymore. This is about doing as much damage in a short period of time to the one target that you actually care about, which is the Baron. So that's why you'd pick up a Sora Blade in this certain situation over potentially the Serpent's Mask. Because you realize that you're not playing a sustain game here. If you're playing a sustain game, you probably lose to the Baron. You're playing a we need to kill Baron as quickly as possible game. And that's uh, maybe even why you're seeing I'm the Doom go for a broken myth next as well as over something like an Eve of Harvest, for instance. He's basically saying I need to get as much damage out as possible here. A lot of people were saying that Baron in 2.3 due to the attack speed changes would come out in force as a fairly consistent laner. We are going to now see that poison shift completed for Leon. However, Rising Lotus, they have the kind of power spike that Glaive hits now. The uh, aftershock into the storm crown. Hell's Devil, well, he's not too far off his third item. Only a couple minutes, realistically. And Team Secret are slipping away from this game. Yes, the gold is close, but the gold is close. That is such a huge win for Rising Lotus. Close or even a hit for Rising Lotus is a massive, massive lead. And not only just the gold and getting items, the more levels you give Barrow, the harder it is to take him down. Remember, every point in his ultimate increases his basic attack range, and he's very close to getting two points in his ultimate, which he has got now. So his basic attack yeah. range has gone up even further, but here goes Team Secret. Ooh, huge impale, Mortal Wound is doing work to keep Rising Lotus low, but here comes the re-engage from them. Leon just about gets away, gonna pop that reflex block to try and survive Flobby, but Just Man will not have the same fate. Agony looking for a second, he's gonna run onto Leon, he finds the kill as well. Leon doesn't able to complete his recall to Two kills go Rising Lotus's way, a huge wave in the mid, and the gold miner looking so, so juicy. Wow, Doom, okay, Ace, Agony just finds it all by himself. This is a complete turnaround for Rising Lotus. Yeah, and you could see Leon now realizes that there's no point in getting defense anymore. Baron is well on his way to being that scary monster that you know him ends in the late game. Another heavy steal added to the backpack. The name of the game remains the same. Team Secret need to burst Hell's Devil, and they got very close there, but the healing and the fountain from Lyra made it so difficult. There's nearly the Tyrant's Monocle. Looks like a build path for Baron remains fairly similar here to that we saw an update 2.2. Hell's Devil going to stick to the Breaking Points, Tyrant's Monocle, Sorrow Blade. Maybe we might see a Bone Saw come out last. We'll have to see. Could just be another Tyrant's Monocle to add to the mix. But right now, that's not the problem for Team Secret. At this point, they don't really care how many items Baron's got. It's not about that anymore. It's about, can we actually kill Baron? And right now, Team Secret, I think they're struggling. They need to find an amazing Miracle Impale stun to allow Leon to go full damage onto his target. Otherwise, I think they're going to be in, well, a really, really tricky spot. Yep, going to see those infusions. Justman, though, is looking to escape. I'm the Doom. On the other side of a wall here. Rising Lotus looking for the engage for themselves. Leon does dive on in, but Hell's Devil gets out for now. Huge damage. Hell's Devil low. Can he sustain? The hills are there, and he's laying down the damage as well. Hell's Devil in trouble, though. Here comes Leon, and he's going to take him down. The burst comes forward, and Leon is able to find the damage. That's going to be a one for none, but Flobby likely to fall very shortly as well. He's trying to escape it. In fact, he just about does, because everyone on Team Secret is low. They do not want to test Agony's Aftershock. So, just a single kill but at least we know right now ex scoundrel that the baron can bleed absolutely even when he managed to get out of the impale with his jump jets still managed to get all their movement speed and their gap closing abilities and i've got to say massive credit to just man he bought the time that leon needed to get in there and deal with hell's devil get in there and deal the damage necessary but it wasn't a convincing team fight win for team secret we've got to keep on top of that it was still a scrappy affair leon Wonder Ways, he might build towards a breaking point now. That could be a heavy steal that goes towards a breaking point. So we could see him go uh, either that or maybe a service mask to get extra sustain. But realistically, I think he's going to go along the build path of get as much weapon power in as possible. Even if a team fight goes a little bit longer, I can build a little bit more weapon power. And more weapon power means I'm more likely to burst Hell's Devil. We saw that they've got it in them now, but that was a very good team fight for Team Secret. They have to find something exactly like that again to beat Rising Lotus in these 3v3 situations. Yeah, absolutely. With Leon completing that breaking point now, the damage ramp up for the Rona will get even more so. Engage, disengage comes forward, Leon 
flies through the passage. Currently, Rising Low is just trying to disengage. There's the ultimate coming forward. And look at the damage that Hell's Devil's able to dish back onto them. His breaking point's starting to stack up now, but they drop so quickly, the fight is disengaged. Something that teams are going to be wary of. They want to continuously fight. Leon dives straight onto this, uh, this Baron, but he's able to escape the Impale once more. The continuous combustions are coming out but team secret have not been able to find their target just yet and they're looking for leon that's going to be him knocked back with a afterburn hell's devil jumps backwards but now he's looking for a revenge onto just man as they're going to get the speed boost here there's the afterburn knocking just man against the wall hell's devil with his jump jets forward will look to try and find the final kill and that's going to be agony finish things off as this all happens ex scoundrel the kraken she spawns and the death time as well they're 11 on leon 24 on just man i'm going to see rising lotus take this kraken yeah, they've got Stormcrown and Glaive as well, Dallas. See, this is going to be mince meat for the Rising Lotus squad. We said when they play their game, when they play to the best of their ability, they can beat practically anyone in the league. I'm going to say, good scalp to take in the best of three series. At least half the scalp by getting a game off Team Secret here. They are going to get the uh, Kraken. It's not over just yet, but the way it's going, especially with Baron now, very close to a four-item spike. You can't really see many ways... Team Secret find their way back in here. There is the breaking point, obviously, like we said for Leon, that could be a saving grace if they get another excellent engage. But I gotta say, the the disengage potential and the peeling of Agony has been really good so far. Makes you wonder what Team Secret will prioritize in the next game if Rising Lotus are able to take this game, push it to an even series. Leon dives forward, but the Bright Bow are going to disengage. Leon just getting bursted on down. The Iron Cannon means Team Secret have to bounce. Just men will get taken very low. Half HP and Hell's Devil dives forward. There's the Afterburn. They're going to look to find Just Men, and Just Men will fall. All this time, the Kraken's on the turret, and that turret lasts nothing. 566 damage to auto attack. Why not for Hell's Devil? And the Kraken, she's going to hit the base now. This is the last hurrah for Team Secret. They need to take down Hell's Devil, but it's very unlikely that they're going to be able to here. Diving forward, looking for the damage. Hell's Devil taken very low. They do burst him. What was that coming out of Team Secret? Agony's trying to finish the game, though. This is going to be Rising Lotus True going all for nothing. Kraken still half HP. Storm Crown on the uh, Glaive as well. This is going to be very close, but Team Secret trying to mount the defense. They find the ace. Now they have to try and take down this Kraken. One more auto attack. Another, but it's going to be taken on down. Team Secret just about saved their base. One final blow from Kraken would have got the game for Rising Lotus. Are Team Secret going to be able to do anything with this gift? It's an almost four item Baron at this point in time. You saw the damage that Leon was able to put out. And the Doom also picked up a bit of extra damage on this petal, not relying on just two outright damage items. Can Team Secret make this a comeback. Can Team Secret find their way back into this game? And it's just 1,000 gold that separates these two teams. And Team Secret might even get their first turret. They're not even no, they're not even going to get their first turret of the game here. They managed to keep the gold almost even, and they haven't got any turrets at all. Pretty insane, if you ask me. They're going to have to look for a very big team fight going forward here, though. It's going to be it's going to have to be huge. Leon's going to have to do the same thing. They're going to have to catch Baron off guard. I think Baron used his jump jets offensively there, Dalsy, so he had no way of getting out either. Yeah, no, it was just half a second till the cooldown came back up. Does look like Team Secret will commit hard for their first turret here at 18 minutes. They do secure it. Kind of that line of turrets standing between Team Secret and the end game does give Rising Lotus a lot of security because every time one of those turrets is destroyed, death timers are reduced, which means that Rising Lotus can respawn a little bit quicker if they do get aced. But Currently, Rising Lotus, they're just looking for one more fight. That's going to be Leon diving forward. He's able to stick, but a good knockback comes oh forward. He's rooted. He's stuck. That's huge from Just Men. Can they find Rise to Hell's Devil? No, they cannot. Hell's Devil's still alive. He's looking for Just Men. He will get taken down, but Leon, he's currently battling Agony, and that's going to be Flobby coming to try and support this uh, this Glaive. That's going to be a two for none. Just Men will recall, but Rising Lotus, they want to finish the game. I'm the Doom, unfortunately. Stuck in the middle. So much damage coming out from Hell's Devil there as well. Like you said, it's this point in the game where Lance is insane. Just Man, I think, is trying to block them outside the base. Agony's going to probably have to burn over the wall here. I don't know if there's anything that Team Secret can do right now. This should be game to Rising Lotus. 10 seconds on Iron the Doom. 
Just Man trying to get into the base, but Flobby just providing a bit of a war on this Lyra. That Vein Crystal is falling, but Doom has respawned. Can they blow up this Glaive? Or will it just be too late? There it is! The Vein Crystal destroyed, and Rising Lotus equalized the series. Well, I was not expecting that when I came into this game, to be honest, Dalsy. Given the way that Team Secret played in the previous game. But I, I guess the way you look at this is when you play against the Baron, there is always this timer that hovers over your head. There's always this this sort of air of of I guess uh doom. I don't want to I don't want to I want to avoid the pun. Um this sort of air of doom that sort of hovers over you that says, okay, if you if you don't win the game early, we're gonna get to the point where we'll basically two shot you. Baron will get to a point with his you know, insane range where he will just crush you. And you need to have a, a, a team composition that, that can consistently look to punish a Baron in lane. Don't think they, they really capitalized on that. They had a Rona and a Lance, and I feel like there was a lot of Petal and Lance roaming going on. But I think Lance being in lane a little bit more, putting more pressure onto this um, Baron might have been effective. But then again, there was the Lyra they had to get through. Very, very good hero to have to defend a squishy target like Baron that needs to make it to the late game. I feel like it was perfect drafting from Rising Lotus. They hit the Baron till the last pick on red side. It means that there was nothing really that Team Secret could do to adapt to the fact that Baron would be pulled. It's the first time Rising Lotus have picked it. And of course, Hell's Devil has moved from the captain position into the carry position in space of Luair not being able to play this weekend. So this time we do not have Rising Lotus on A side. They are on, sorry, they are now on A side. So they cannot hide their picks till last minute. And that's going to be very interesting to see how they combat this draft. We're going to throw it back to the analysts. They can talk more about this. So take it away. Thank you very much, guys. Rising Lotus take game number two. It's going to be another game three already here in Europe. And I saw you guys getting kind of irate over there a second ago. <laughs> I actually don't know what it was about. So I just want to give you a chance to talk about it because it seems like you're something you're passionate about. Yeah, uh, Team Secret needed to play to their win conditions. They Every time they fought in lane, they lost. Got aced twice in lane. They when they fought in jungle, they won that fight. And Leon's build and uh, I'm Doom's build. It's not it's not a burst build. They need to go burst. Uh, Leon already applies mortal wound with Rona's B, so he she doesn't need poison shape. He should go straight crit because Baron had no armor, so he should just went straight damage and crit or something to burst Baron down. They didn't have the damage to do that. Yeah, and I don't often disagree with our casters. I think they usually bring up the very good points. Usually we end up mirroring what they say at the end. But if I was getting a little. Uh, my, my facial expressions were because I didn't agree at all with saying that Rising Lotus had a perfect draft there. I think their draft was definitely good, but a lot of this came down to Team Secret not playing well into Rising Lotus, and Rising Lotus playing it. The gameplay was exactly what they had to do mm. when they won those fights. It wasn't necessarily just a perfect draft for them. Let's have a look at a replay, actually, because I, th I think you can see Rising Lotus playing their comp properly in this fight. They fight in the lane. Lance, as Sweet J always talks about, much so better in the jungle. Those jump jets yeah. from Baron were so good. The jump jets from Baron gets him out of trouble. Lyra's Borg also gives him more sustain. So if they can't burst on Baron and that first engage, they are in trouble. And they don't have the damage. I mean, Poison Shiv and uh, Soro doesn't do enough damage when Leon could have went a, a better build and Petal too. So I felt like every time they try to do that engage, if they don't kill Baron against a Lyra comp and Baron jumps out, gets healed up, etc. You're gonna lose the fight, and plus you're not fighting in jungle on, on top of that, so Lance is not gonna be able to do much. And all of this stemmed from that first ace that Rising Lotus was able to pick up. It was in the lane once again, but they also were able to poke so much damage. There were so many attacks Baron got off onto Leon, onto Just Man before Team Secret tried to engage, that by the time they engaged, they were already missing about a quarter of their health to begin with, and even though Baron is not strong early on, shouldn't be able to win those fights. They took too much damage before looking to engage. And so, again, that was just Rising Lotus playing the composition very well in being patient, waiting for Team Secret to make have to make the move to try and engage if they wanted to engage, and just you know, constantly getting that harassment damage down beforehand. And one quick note, um, I loved what uh, Hell's Devil did on Baron. He maxes B first. Mm -hmm. When you max B, you are immune to debuffs. So he jumped out of the roots yep. and was immune to that because he maxes B first. So amazing uh, a skill utilization by Hell's Devil there. We've talked about that historically a lot. I really don't think there is any reason, unless you maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe if you're Crystal or something, you might overdrive the A. But really, it's all about those, those jumps. You know, you need to be able to get away from the crowd control. 
it gives you such a huge that's what won them that fight that we saw the replay of exactly. he jumped out of an impale like that's period that wins the fight if he gets <laughs> impaled there that completely goes the other way all right so thinking now about the draft of game three i definitely think we've, we've talked about rising lotus and their skill in the draft before and the fact that they are a team that on any day could beat anyone mm -hmm. they just never quite finish up the series normally right is this the series for them can they make it all the way do they have the draft they need for game number three well that's what we're gonna have to find out i'm asking a prediction i think it's I can't more predict if their draft is gonna be good until they make a good draft <laughs> that is a wussy answer i want to <laughs> i want you to predict I mean, I can it. Say, yeah sure i mean they can draft perfectly here but it's a matter of if they're i going have to, to ask you far ahead of time we know what happens when i leave it to the last minute all right, so I think it's Team Secret's game to win or lose here. If they don't play to their win conditions and they don't build properly and they don't engage properly, then they will lose against Riding Lotus. All right, well, we're into the draft number three here. Rising Lotus now on A side. Ban away Kestrel, the same ban they did on A side in game number one. Team Secret has a chance to answer. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they ban away the Fortress once again here. Again, just kind of mirroring game number one a bit. It might be the Fortress or Lyra, um, since Rising Lotus is very comfortable with that Lyra pick. And maybe Team Siri may want to switch things up and ban the Lyra away from them. But I think it should most likely will be Fortress here. Yep. Nice call, Tasty Bacon. Yeah, it's a pretty easy one to make. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, Rising Lotus make another easy call. They pick up a Lyra. Very strong hero. Still seeing that 100% draft appearance. Nope. Oh, she didn't get picked in one of the games at the end of Split 1. I forgot about that. <laughs> I, remember, I remember you being really upset that you missed it. Yep. All right. And then uh, Lance. Lance going to be first pick for Team Secret. Samuel, Vox, Band Away. We're starting to see the patterns already, at least for Europe. Adagio. Yeah, the they're going doing the exact same draft as Game 1. So Rising Lotus needs to change something up here because they're giving Adagio Lance is extremely strong of a combination. And they're giving Leon Adagio again. Why would you? I would rather play into a Vox than a, than a carry Adagio, to be honest. So this is very interesting draft by Rising Lotus, and they might have drafted themselves in the corner if they don't switch it up. Here, I think Pedo would be a good pick because Pedo is good with Lyra since Samuel's not open. Um, they decide to go with Sky. So that's, not, that's actually not bad into Carry Dodger, but Lance is good into Sky. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Is That's the concern. It, it's, it's hit or miss, uh, both literally and figuratively. If Lance hits the Impales onto Sky, then Lance just destroys Sky. If he misses the Impales, then all of a sudden Sky is able to dance circles around him. So uh, we'll have to see how that pick works out, how those interactions happen, and there's another Baron. I was Baron. <laughs> about to ask about this pick because I, I figured, okay, you know, you've seen what you can do into a Lance as a Baron. You can just Talk us open. Out. So that was my concern. <laughs> is there a Silver Bullet pick for Team Secret if Rising Lotus try and replicate Game 2? Especially because of the fact that with the Baron pick, that almost guarantees Sky is going to be Crystal. Taka is so good into mm. Crystal Sky. Weapon Sky, she can you know do a little bit to deal with the Taka, but Crystal Sky has some trouble. Is there a world in which we see the roles reversed here, and we see the Weapon Sky and a Crystal Baron? Crystal Baron, I mean, we we like never. There's seen a it. world where that happens, <laughs> but not in this timeline. Highly unlikely. <laughs> Crystal Baron has OP range, but it's to skill shot a Taka, it's going to be almost impossible. You'd have to focus a dodge and just go all in. While Taka and Lance is going to CC you or kill you. <laughs> the damage of Crystal Baron is some of the highest damage in the game. But it's some of the most inconsistent damage in the game. Because it's <laughs> so difficult to hit those mortar shots repeatedly. So knowing then that it's very likely to be the Crystal Sky and the Weapon Baron. As you mentioned, the Taka is an excellent pick into those two things. My question is, did Rising Lotus do this knowing the Taka was coming and still feel confident? Or did they maybe overlook it? If they still feel confident, you got to expect maybe there's a reason for that. They think they can outplay. How does the composition actually win games with that Lyra, Sky, and Baron? Essentially the same thing they did in game two. It, they have to be very patient with their fighting. They have to force Team Secret. They have to try and, you know, take the initiative and force fights to happen. And for Team Secret, it's the, you know, essentially, again, the same thing. They have to be a little bit more aggressive than they were in game number two. It's interesting, right? Like, both teams replicating the games that they were successful <laughs> already in, in yeah. the series. All right, quickly, the uh, the predictions for game number three and the series. I think the Taka ends up being a little bit too strong for the Sky to deal with. They're going to be able to get onto Baron. They're going to be able to shut it down. I think Team Secret takes it. If Team Secret fights in jungle, pressures lane, snowballs early. They will take it. 
All right, let's see if they can do it. Team Secret or Rising Lotus moving forward to day number two. We've got Dowsey and Excoundrel. What happens when winning compositions, Excoundrel, go up against each other? Well, the answer is one of them loses. Team Secret or Rising Lotus is going to be either one of them, Excoundrel. Yeah. The obvious statements that. are I obvious. I actually just thought that both teams won at the end of this, Dowsey. I thought it was going to be a complete <laughs> draw, to be honest. Draws in EU, man. Hey, it's happened before. Memes. Anyway, let's get on. This is uh, an interesting one because, again, you are running a similar kind of composition for, for Rising Lotus here. You've subbed out that CP Glaive for the Sky. You, you can peel with her death from above, but it's not quite as effective. That's one of the only issues here. There's not, oh. not as much to stop Team Secret uh, finding their targets this time around, apart from that Lyra. And again, a lot of this is going to be about whether Flobby can have his perfectly timed Bright Bulwarks and whether they'll be effective at stopping Just Man and I'm the Doom. I'm gonna beam on this uh, weapon power. Leon's in trouble in the lane. Whoa. Like, there was Whoa. so much damage. They gotta find the kill. <gasps> Agony's going for it, but the heal's too much. Agony's gonna lose his life. First blood goes the way of Leon. I was gonna say, Leon's playing an aggressive lane and he seems to be winning it out, but then this gang comes forward. Now Hell's Devil in trouble as Justman lays down the pain, and that is a devastating error for Agony. Yeah, but I don't blame him for doing it. That's the worst thing. Like, it was so close that it was very difficult to predict whether you would actually get the kill there or not. Remember, if you get first blood and then you end up dying, it's probably worth it for your team because of first blood. There we go. Going on to Hell's Devil. Here we go. Yeah, Hell's Devil going to be taken on down here. Leon able to find the kill credit. Doom doesn't even get an assist, unfortunately. Too late into the fight. But wow, what a great start for Team Secret. Leon straight in the lane. First thing he did was go aggressive onto Hell's Devil, knocked him right down to just like 100 HP, and it's been such a pain for him. Agony's coming in, looking for a return, looking for Just Man. Leon trying to body block it on up, but it's just the auto attacks right now. Agony not going to make the same mistake twice, though. Respects Leon's damage and falls back. Gotta say, I like the way that Team Secret have come out and approached this game. They realize that they can't be resting on their laurels. They can't give Rising Lotus that kind of space that they gave them in the last game. I expect Leon early journey boots again. I expect him to, you know, once he's got that alternating current, to go super aggressive on his targets. Yeah, you, you, you definitely, definitely cannot give that level of space to Rising Lotus this time again when they have the Baron. And, and, and actually, Team Secret look like they know that. They are putting so much pressure onto this lane and I think I'm the Doom will continue to return there looking for kills kind of what we expected to see in the last game but they are making it happen in the game that counts they have to continue this pressure though the problem is if they don't continue this pressure Baron is always going to scale up it's it's always difficult playing against the Baron because you know that you're on a timer and uh, the timer will tick over your head and always uh, sort of keep you thinking keep you guessing about how to approach the game so it's all up to Team Secret. They need to do all their work and make sure that they put pressure on Hell's Devil will not allow him to get to that late game spike that he got to last time. Right, and this is the point I was making just before we threw to the analyst, is that Rising Lotus, they hit the Baron right till last, which meant that uh, Team Secret couldn't draft into it. They couldn't really adjust what they wanted. This time, they had the opportunity to. They could choose how they were going to play against the, uh, the Baron with their last pick. Just um, diversify their draft as much as possible. Bit of uh, charming going back and forth as Just Man and Flobby uh, exchange kisses in this jungle bush. Quite cute to see, but currently I wouldn't be taunting anything right now. Team Secret, they have your number in the lane, and Leon is on this Adagio that we saw him run away with in the game one. Yeah, and with that journey boots, he'll be able to keep his tabs on Baron even when Baron uses those jump jets. Just Man tries to predict, doesn't work. Doesn't work, but Hell's Devil's still stuck in the middle of a fight. He's not moving. That's going to be him falling. Just nowhere to run as soon as he committed he didn't even attempt to escape rising lotus they lose him now another engage straight onto flobby here up against the turret he's burning down and another kill goes leon's way i'm the doom about to escape very sick stuff from this Tucker. agony's trying his best to find a kill but he gets rooted either dude comes in and it's a double kill for leon unbeatable at the moment on his adagio five to zero and team secret looking to see if they can't get a turret as well yeah, I might not be able to get the turret just yet because Hell's Devil has returned, but this is what we expected to see from Team Secret against this Baron from Rising Lotus. Again, I agree with you, Dowsey, what you said. I think, you know, Rising Lotus picked the Baron in the end of their last draft. It wasn't a perfect draft. 
absolutely agree mm -hmm. with Casey Bacon. It was, it was not a, a perfect a, a draft. A good but, move is what I mean by that. But it was a good move in the draft to, to use Baron as a last pick, knowing that they felt pretty safe picking it into the competition. They took the risk this time. They took the risk with Baron saying maybe Team Secret don't know how to deal with it. But Team Secret have brought Iron the Doom back onto this tacker that was so successful with him. They repeat the composition from game one. Leon's on that Adagio. Big, hard-hitting uh, Adagio, especially when he picks up that alternating current. So... They, they felt like they knew how to go against what Rising Lotus brought to the table in Game 2, and it's what exactly they brought in Game 1. And we'll have to see whether that results in a win for them and that series closure that they so desperately need. Remember Team Secret, they, they want to make sure they solidify their place here in Europe. They want to solidify their uh, position at the Unified Live Championships. And they're going to do that with a fight. Yeah, Flobby's going to go very low. I'm the Doom, able to find the Execute and take him down as well. Now Rising Lotus trying to defend the turret. Where is Hell's Devil going? <laughs> is able to dodge away from the Impale from Just Man, but this turret is under fire. Leon can just fire away at it. I am the Doom going to take it down very quickly as well. You know, CP Adagio, he can siege turrets fairly well. And when you've got that weapon power up close, where it just eats it away. And that's going to be an engage onto Hell's Devil as well. They're going to take the turret. They're going to take Hell's Devil's life as well. Agony doing his best to try and find some return fire. But against three, it's a risky maneuver. Will this guy be able to find it is the question. There's the death from above, but it misses. And that's going to be Rising Lotus losing their lives. First it's Flobby, then it's Agony as he burns away. No, he gets taken down by the Impale. Does find one for his own, but it's just a steamroll at this point. A scoundrel, 9 to 1, a 3,000 gold lead. Team Secret setting themselves up nicely. A sky doesn't quite have the same ring of protection than a, uh, a CP Glaive does. They're going in onto Hell's Devil again. One base oh. attack, that's a kill. That is a kill, and what a way to start a game against the Baron than taking him to 0-4 at 7 minutes. Team Secret said, I'm not letting this go the same way the last game went. We, we are better than to let a Baron get to a serious late game threat potential. And, uh, well, they're certainly putting their money where their mouth is because that is a 0-4 Baron, a 0-3 Lyra, and a 1-3 Sky. This is Team Secret dominating from the outset. Absolutely insane stuff here so far and they're looking to put even more pressure on to agony as they go into his jungle still away some of the camps now of course excoundrel the ticking time bomb that is baron exists right rising lotus they certainly have late game but they're not even making it there there agony goes very low is able to dodge away for now there's the iron cannon straight on to i'm the doom he may lose his life no dodges away and that's going to be him picking up the kill onto hell's devil as well Death from above doesn't connect. So much mobility in this composition here for Team Secret with the Tucker and uh, Leon. Well, he hasn't quite got his journey boots yet. We've not quite seen him build into them just yet. But if he does, even more he's mobility. He's at tier two, though. I mean, he's, he's, get, he's getting there. Definitely is. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I expect him to go for Broken Myth first, but we'll have to see. This is going to be a men's gold payout coming out. 291 gold for everyone. Leon. With 900 gold, does upgrade to those tier 2 boots, even before he finishes his second item. Just prioritizing the ability to get onto Hell's Devil and chase him down. So Leon, again, shoving lane in. Let's look at the CS advantages as well. Almost 30 for Leon at this point in time. Well, it's one way to, to kill the Barrow, but also a way to starve his farm too. And that's a really important aspect of playing into this particular hero too. As this gets to the late game, Floppy actually looking aggressively for a move here. He is looking ag aggressive. There's a death from above. Tucker just trying to hide on out currently. Rising Lotus, they've started this fight off well. But really, that's as much as they can hope for for now. Agony's trying to find a target. The four barrage won't connect with anyone. Damage though, here's an impale. That's going to be rude onto Agony. Look at the damage traded immediately onto him. And I'm the Doom, survives through it all. Devil's, Devil's trying to do his work onto Leon as he dives forward, fades him in, but Leon just bursts him on down and he's looking for a kill onto Flobby. He gets it, a double and an ace. Team Secret gonna take this turret away. They could even look to pressure the second one. Uh, again, you gotta start looking and pointing fingers towards Rising Lotus' draft this time round. The Sky and the Baron, they open themselves up to the same kind of counters, which is a very easy, you know, pick off for the, um, attacker here as well as picking it into a lance which you know as both tasty bacon and sweet generous alluded to if you're lance you can actually do very well against the sky and again you see here not much happening for this guy right now just getting decimated by this team secret lineup I, I, I got a, you, you got a question whether especially when you pick a baron right 
often I like to say a baron is like a, a basket of eggs, as in you put them all in, in there. <laughs> it's like baron is your basket of eggs and you kind of build a composition around him. When you pick a sky, it's not really building a composition around Baron. It doesn't provide the level of protection I think you need to make him work. And yeah, I, I was just a little bit surprised to see that at the end of the draft from Rising Lotus here. I, just my personal opinion. I'm not a big fan of, of running two late game damage threats with a, with a Baron. I think it's always better to have a Baron and then maybe have a, a sort of off tank damage threat that could do peeling and then you have your peeling captain as well. That's, that's my personal opinion about how to run a Baron composition. But... Team Secret knew exactly how to counter draft this and have done it incredibly well. Right, that's the thing, you know, it's not like the Glaive was banned. Uh, Rising Lotus could have picked it up if they wanted to, paired it on out with the um, with the Lyra from the previous game, had a complete rematch of comp winning compositions, but, you know, they opt in for this Sky, and it, the, the Samuel's been prioritized uh, a ban from Team Secret this entire drafting stage, and it's because Agony has played uh, uh, Samuel so often throughout his series. Yes, his sure. win rate not, may, may not be uh, super amazing with it. It's it's kind of 50-50, but at the same time, uh, it's a very comfort pick for him. And so banning away, it, Rising Lotus are already in an uncomfortable position, having to put Hell's Devil into the carry position instead of uh, Captain. And it just makes things difficult for them uh, right off the beginning. Absolutely. Have They're going to go though. for an aggressive move here, Flobby, over the wall. And here goes Team Secret. Yeah, no, it's going to be Flobby into the wall, and that's going to be him trying to get away, but he cannot, and impale onto Hell's Devil. He flies out. We'll be able to survive there, Excoundrel. A one for none currently as Agony tries to set up some damage, push Team Secret out of the base here. They've got this ticking time bomb of a Baron. We are going to see a pause come out just now, uh, so we'll have to see what that's all about, but... Yo, I want to ask you about this, Baron. Is there any chance for Rising Lotus really to get back into this game? Uh, I mean, obviously, there's always a chance when you have a Baron, right? But the Team Secret has already done the work. They've already dug the quarry. They've already opened the mine. They're just looking to strike gold. Uh, it, it, this is a 10k gold lead that they've accrued against the Baron. So even if Baron gets to the late game, he's still got to get through this massive barrier that is an extra two items whilst being a, a huge threat or hugely under threat from leon and Nine the doom in all of these team fight situations so yes there is a chance dowsy is it a, is it a big chance hell no it's a tiny chance and i think team secret probably closed the game out from here uh, one of the things i did want to touch on was maybe we were talking about oh you could have picked the glaive the problem is you have to go cp glaive you've got a weak early jungle and that might have opened up a koshka pick coming out from team secret which would have been good into both baron and the, the glaive so maybe the sky pick was there to say well actually sky's got an okay early jungle clear she can kite quite well against things of like koshka so maybe that was the, that was the thought process there but I, I'm, I'm still unsure that it's the best way to build a composition when you have a baron because it just opens you up to the early game too much you know it just makes it too easy to exploit too easy to find fights not enough peel especially pre six um you know you didn't have those defensive afterburns for baron in the lane because no one could do it apart from the bright bulwark on lyra which is a hard ability to hit in the early levels so yeah, I think uh, Team Secret picked very well here, and I think they've actually played to their win conditions. And you saw how different it was this game, Dowsy, when they sent their Lance and, and their attacker to the lane, consistently looking for fights, consistently looking to pressure Baron and take that turret early. It was a, it was a whole different story. Yeah, no, it certainly is. And, you know, we're at this 12-minute mark. The pause does come forward. Hell's Devil looking to try and get out here and will be able to walk away from Team Secret as everyone just disengages Excoundrel. But at this moment, at this 12 minute mark, things are just looking a little bit scary. This Baron, well, it's uh, not quite hit a damage point yet where it's a s considerable for damage threat. Currently sitting at that breaking point Sorrow Blade, looking for a Monocle's uh, next item. Uh, whereas Leon, uh, he's just finished a Shadow Glass. Yeah, Leon. Finished Shadow Glass and he's gone for it because he knows that the burst damage is very important in this kind of situation. Burst out that Baron, put even more pressure on him and the Sky in these teamfights against the double squishy. I always say that sort of the rule of thumb for going Shadow Glass on a CP carry is generally against double squishy compositions because the flat scaling means you'll deal more damage to them, obviously. Um, so yeah, I think this is a perfect link set on by. That's going to be Sentry defeated, one life remaining. Team Secret kind of pulling off the gas a little bit. I guess they're just sort of pondering as and where to uh, to apply pressure, but most of it is just going to be starving the map of objectives and gold for 
the uh, Rising Lotus lineup. Right, and you can see they've got Infusions ticking. Just in case the fight breaks out, it gives them even more damage potential. Whereas Rising Lotus, they just cannot afford them right now, trying to get towards those late game items. And Eve of Harvest, a Frost Burn there for Agony. Almost got that Monica's. Oh no, Agony's gonna walk into a Death Bush, and a Death Bush will result in death for Agony. And a crucial kill goes over to Team Secret. Let's see what they try to do here. They're going to push straight on into the base, right around the minion wave, try and find Flobby out, but the Impale is dodged away. They're just going to take this turret down, tank it on up. It's a risky maneuver. Hell's Devil's certainly going to try and punish them for it, but that turret is just falling. There's nothing that Rising Lotus can do. A turret secured for Agony's death, and now they're going in for more. Hell's Devil gets taken on down. Flobby, he's trying to escape, and he will just about get him out as well as Agony respawns and tries to lay down the pain. Team Secret will disengage, but now I'm the Doom, the last man out, and actually is forced to get onto the other side of a uh, forward barrage. He's just going to take Flobby down, though, as a result. Said, hey, you want to kill me? Well, nah, man, that's not the way it goes. And Team Secret, they walk away even further. More gold in their pocket, a 11,000 gold lead, and Agony rooted on down. That's just going to be Agony dying here as well. Hell's Devil, he respawns. It's just stuttered. Uh, deaths here, you know, staggered deaths, six scoundrel, and really, that's exactly what Team Secret want. Well, any deaths at all is great for Team Secret. They're going to take the sentry, eliminate it. That opens up the entire Rising Lotus side of the map. Not that they didn't have control of that side of the map anyway. Now that they do, it makes it even easier for them to find the kills necessary. One, ten seconds until Kraken spawns. About to say one second, that's not true. Ten seconds until Kraken spawns. That will likely be the... Uh, Key target here for Team Secret, it absolutely guarantees them a win in this situation. And Rising Lotus, they realize that they actually might even have to try and contest this. And that's going to be risky for them. Either way, it feels like a lose-lose situation for these guys. Um, Just Man may be looking to go in here. There he goes. That's going to be him right on to Hell's Devil. Rooted on up. Hell's Devil is laying down a bit of damage. He dives straight on to Leon. That's a ballsy move from Hell's Devil. And a ballsy move that will not result in any kills. Agony trying to run away. That's the route on to Flobby. And now it looks like it might just be over right here as Agony loses his life. Leon and Justman going to try and take down these turrets. A decisive lead right now for Team Secret as they look to finish the game. Hell's Devil just moments away from respawning and Justman is very low at this point, but the turret goes down. The Vein Crystal exposed. Hell's Devil respawning will not be enough to stop this onslaught onto the Vein Crystal, and Hell's Devil knows it. That's going to be Team Secret taking the series here at Scoundrel 2 1 in a very decisive third match. Super, super close series, but in the end, Team Secret find that decisive win. They realize that Baron strategy, they know how to play into it. They put a lot of pressure in the early lane, put, well, Hell's Devil down to 0-4 in eight minutes. I mean, he had no farm. He was sort of 30 farm under Leon. They'd lost a lot of turrets as well. And that Taka pick allowed them to consistently apply pressure without the threat of getting peeled by Afterburn or, you know, the threat of even Bright Bulwark because it's very difficult to Bright Bulwark, something like an x Retsu. Great, great, great stuff from uh, Team Secret. Now, do you know what? I, I, I'm not even going to touch on it more. I think the analysts can do that, Darcy. Yes, yeah, certainly.